What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. What looks like the Switch revision that's been dubbed the Switch Pro by the internet is back in the news again. Over the last few days, it's been a lot of talk around resolution like 1440p or 4K or maybe the system even coming out this year, especially yesterday when a ton of headlines went up. Well, I fear we would talk about all of that information and where exactly it's coming from here today. We're also gonna be talking about the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller drift as iFixit did a serious deep dive on the joysticks in inside of the PlayStation 5 and uh, came to a conclusion that things might not be getting much better for all of these different controllers we're using now today. And we're also gonna talk about the DS Lite as a new feature was found that shows it actually outputting video to your TV. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new to the Small Life channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Persona 5 Strikers. It should be out now. I, I picked up the digital deluxe version so I can start playing it before the podcast on Saturday. Got it on the PS5, it's been playing really well. Having a good time uh, with this kind of take on the Persona universe, Persona franchise, but, Oh, it's going to PC, and th this was a strange one when it was first announced because no one was expecting it, but I mean, I guess Persona 4 Golden shocked Atlas so much. They were actually surprised, by the way, that that sold as well as it did, which is still weird to me. It's like, yeah, it was trapped on the Vita for so long. It's a great game. You move Persona 4 Golden over to, over to PC for 20 bucks, and a lot of people wanted to buy it. It's like, wow mind-blowing stuff. Maybe think about putting that game on, you know, other platforms. Anyway, let's head over here to DSO Gaming, where they do talk about the DRM that's supposed to be present for Persona 5 Strikers, saying, Sega and Atlas have released Persona 5 Strikers for those that have pre-ordered its deluxe edition. However, and while its Steam store page lists Denuvo, it appears that the companies, ha the companies have released a Denuvo free build of it. The version that the deluxe owners can download from Steam right now does not contain the Denuvo anti-tamper tech. And a <laughs> little bit of a concern here because while there is a chance that they opted out of it instead of like they checked the box a while ago and then we're getting a close release like you know what we don't really need this DRM like we thought we did and we're just gonna not we're not gonna put it in there on the other side they could have forgotten about it or it's part of a day one patch yes so we'll find out about that very very soon I'm hoping that they decided not to put it in because if they forgot to put it in ahead of time, then they're gonna actually take DRM and just force it into your game through a patch that you've already been playing. Yeah, that's not gonna be a great look. Also, did you know that there is an entire speed running scene around Wii Sports? I mean, a lot of us played Wii Sports, sold over 80 million copies. It came with the Wii itself, and that was probably the most popular game on the Wii. If you knew someone who had a Wii, they were probably playing you know, tennis or golf or boxing or, or bowling, any of that. But it does look like there is a speedrunning scene around Wii Sports Golf, and there's been a new glitch found I mean, years later now that changes the entire game up. We can head over here. This one is from Plied823 showing off a new glitch where during your swing, if you are able to disconnect your Wii remote by removing the batteries and then plugging them back in very quickly, which would then reconnect your Wii remote, you're able to take another hit in that same turn without having to watch like the camera show where the ball is and where it's landing and wait for that and then line back up. This will also allow you to hit off of water or in the out of bounds area, as you can tell right away, that would make it much faster to get to the hole and then on to the next one and kind of move through things a lot faster, which yes, would change up speed running. While it is interesting to think that there is a speed running scene, around Wii Sports Golf. I do see how this glitch could change all of it. And it's, like I said, interesting to think about that. I, I guess if if it, you can set a time limit, you can technically speed run anything. Oh, and I've seen a lot of concern around those, uh, those Joy-Cons coming out in July that are Zelda themed. And I was very happy that I was able to get my pre-order at Best Buy, but because I've seen so many people concerned, I figure I would point it out that Amazon seems to have their page live now, but they haven't gone on sale just yet. It's just kind of like a placeholder page that you want to keep an eye on. Wario64, I'm sure, will be tweeting when it goes live on Amazon. So go ahead and get that page bookmarked. I'll leave it linked down below so you can head over there right away and get that done. And when you see Wario start tweeting about it, you want to get over there as soon as you can and get that pre-order in. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the Switch revision, dubbed the Switch Pro. We might have to change the name up. I don't know. Maybe we come up with a better one here. I mean, there's like, I've seen new Nintendo Switch. That's, that's probably what Nintendo's going to call it. Let's, let's all be real here. Uh, but there's also like, I like Super Nintendo Switch. That's good. That might be some nostalgia talking. I don't know. I know Switch Pro is like the, ex 
accepted term because we have like PS4 Pro and iPad Pro and all this, but I'm sure Nintendo will call it something completely out of left field. Anyway, the idea of a Switch revision has come up basically every year since the Switch released. Even before the Switch released, I remember we were talking about some other more powerful Switch, but the talks around a Switch revision have continued over on Reset Era. In fact, there's a thread that's hundreds of pages longer than it should be based on the amount of information that we have right now for the Switch revision, which is not much. Either way though, they continue to speculate and it's interesting because they'll follow the different bits of technology that gets introduced and talks around fabrication, all those things. But it does look like after Project Triangle Strategy, that, yep, that's what they're calling it, Project Triangle, Triangle Strategy came out, the demo for it, there was a data mine. And in the data mine, there appeared to be a mention of a higher resolution. You can see this here, this being from Zombie. And I mean, you can see right down there, 2560 by 1440. Now this naturally is a higher resolution than what we're used to. We would expect that to say at the most 1920 by 1080 for the Switch, even at talking about a Switch profile, but it looks like that is incorrect after a, the data mine was posted up online for comparison, showing that value to really be 1920 by 1080. So any of those headlines or anything talking about like 1440 for the Switch, that turned out to be incorrect, but naturally the speculation and rumors didn't stop there. This coming to us from Nate, that's right. Nate, you, you know Nate, <laughs> he says, won't really talk more about the tech specs than I have. It has DLSS and it has 4K functionality. No reason to go deeper than that right now. It's enough to illustrate the device is a meaningful upgrade. First party support with span, will, will span the new hardware and current switch for at least a couple of years. We were shown as much yesterday and I talked about it on my latest podcast. That's Nate the Hate. Uh, head over there and, you know, bug him in the comments. I'm sure he would like that. And he goes on further to say, let's say I'm confident it gets announced this year. A delay to 2022 would need to be communicated in the next few months as dev kits and third, third party partners begin to plan software for the device. As of this very moment, February 18th, 2021, I believe the hope remains for a 2021 launch. So dev kits come up and that immediately piques a lot of people's interest. Cause it's like, whoa, dev kits are going out. That usually means we're getting closer to a legitimate release for this thing. And they would probably want to pair it with some kind of game that would make it feel like, okay, I need that newer hardware so I can play this game at like the best, high, highest fidelity I can, best frame rate, whatever like that. So Breath of the Wild 2 is the one that I'm sure comes up in a lot of people's minds. We've seen Breath of the Wild break records for Zelda games completely. I mean, it's like, what, 20 something million, right? And then you include the Wii, uh, Wii U numbers, and it gets higher than that. Much higher than the last best-selling uh, title, which I feel like was Twilight Princess. I think I'll double check that, but either way, yes, sold way above. So you pair it with something like Breath of the Wild 2, that makes sense. Another one that comes to mind for a lot of people when it comes to visuals would probably be Metroid Prime 4. Despite us not seeing it, it's done by Retro and we, we've seen what they were able to do with like the GameCube and the Wii for the previous iterations of the Metroid Prime series. We assume they would also put something out that probably could take advantage of newer hardware that Nintendo would provide. But I have to say, looking at this, Nate really hasn't said much else here than he hasn't already said on his Nate the Hate podcast or on the Spawncast. I think this past weekend he mentioned like all of this stuff. DLSS is expected because Nintendo's paired with Nvidia and it gives them a good way to then upscale to 4K. So that's where 4K comes from. It's not actual 4K, it's rendered at a lower native resolution and then it's just moved up to 4K so it looks much better on our screens, which I mean, DLSS 2.0 has proven to be very useful for a lot of people with higher frame rates and you still get a really nice looking picture, sometimes better than what was shown before, depending on the textures that were present at the time. They show like things were legible on different parts of the walls that wouldn't have been otherwise without DLSS. So it's, it's interesting stuff to consider all of this, but yes, it still falls in the realm of rumors, speculation, all of that. Nate's pretty good overall with, with uh, the different things he's saying, so I would say still keep an eye on all of this situation going into uh, going into the end of 2020 21 just remember there is that semiconductor shortage right now that's really putting a, a strain on just being able to create some of these systems as they are now the ps5 sony's having a hard time microsoft's having a hard time and yes nintendo is having a hard time just with the regular switch now so i still think there's a chance it could end up in early 2022 but 
I feel like Nintendo wants it to be in this next fiscal year, that fiscal year starting in April, coming up here in a few months and then ending in March, 2022. So we'll see what happens exactly. But no, nothing really about 1440p ended up being correct. The rest, as you can see here from Nate, mostly speculation, but it does make sense. Next up, let's talk about that DualSense controller drift. It's just the latest instance of controller drift in a whole history of it. I mean, really going back to like the PlayStation 4, there was a lot of talks around that, but there were also a lot of PlayStation 4s out there, which means there were a lot of controllers and all of this, but controller drift isn't necessarily new. It's just interesting that we're in a time where all three major companies pro like producing these different controllers are facing class action lawsuits right now. But I fix it did a really good teardown and deep dive on the joysticks themselves that are in the DualSense controller to maybe figure out exactly what is happening here. And what they found was it is indeed using the same joysticks that we've seen in the PlayStation 4, in the Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. That's right, they all use basically the same joystick from Alps. And looking at them, they're kind of cheap. Like really they are. You can find them online super cheap, which tells me, yeah, these these different companies like Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony ordering in massive bulk are getting them even cheaper, probably by quite a bit. So unfortunately, if you really think about it, the one part that you, when you pick up a controller and you just take for granted, is that joystick, like we really do, until it starts drifting. Anyway, you can see some of their video here where they do disassemble the joystick itself, showing off the potentiometers inside, and some of the areas that do get kind of scratched up, and where that kind of neutral position is shifted at times, just over where, in fact, they were able to do some math and figure out just based on Alps' own kind of specifications that you could look at an operating life of around 417 hours. Now that will vary based on the type of game you're playing. You're playing like, they say, Say, Call of Duty, where you're looking around all the time, moving that left stick a lot. Yeah, that's gonna that's that's gonna line up more so where you're gonna be done with that thing in like half a year. But if you're playing like slower RPGs or something where you're mostly going through a menu and choosing different things, you might not even touch the joystick that much. It might last longer for you. Basically, what we're seeing here is these joysticks are not that durable overall, and that's kind of why we're in a position now where all of these companies are facing class action lawsuits around this. And the real issue is that is the cheapest part of the control. It sounds weird, but yes, the joysticks might end up being like one of the cheaper parts of the controller overall. But if you think about it, it's kind of one of the most important parts as it controls your main character, controls where you're looking and all of this. And if they decide to upgrade it, controllers could get more expensive. And it's harder, I think, to sell people on the idea of premium thumbsticks or, hey, thumbsticks that just won't break on you. But I would prefer that. Honestly, I would pay a little more for a controller that will last me the lifetime of my console rather than have to buy like four controllers over the span of a console generation. Next up, let's talk about Halo Infinite. We should already be playing it. It was supposed to have come out next to the Xbox Series X. It was on the back of the box with Master Chief. They had marketing material set up with Monster Energy where they're gonna run the whole competition and all of this. Yes, it seemed like they were ready to go. Unfortunately, Halo Infinite wasn't ready to go and they had to push it to, here's hoping this holiday. I mean, it would be a shame if it fell into 2022, but it does look like Microsoft is pushing hard right now. And they were actually pushing pretty hard before the holidays as well, as it looked like they were bringing in studios from internally to try to get this thing out. In fact, now we actually see some LinkedIn profiles kind of proving this. We can see this tweeted out by Timmer showing a uh, visual effects artist from the Coalition Studio saying, currently working on Halo Infinite, mainly on cinematics and campaign. And we can also see one here for level artist mentioning Halo Infinite as one of the games they are also working on. It's not a surprise that Microsoft would bring in the Coalition to try to get Halo done next to 343 because remember, they're working on multiplayer and campaign. And from what I can gather, it does appear that the campaign is supposed to be very sizable and the multiplayer is gonna be kind of kept separate as more of an ongoing project. One that's gonna be a live service that runs for what could be honestly like eight, nine, 10 years even, could be kind of something they just keep alongside Game Pass and just adding value as they go forward there, their games as a service style game. So looking at this, you bring in the coalition, they probably have other studios also kind of helping out here. Halo Infinite's gonna be a very big game, so it's not surprising to see this, but here's hoping Halo Infinite's good. If Halo Infinite com comes out and has this much support behind it to get it out, and it's like, it shows up and it's underwhelming. It's like a 70 on Metacritic or something. And people are just like looking at this thinking, wow, that used to be Microsoft's 
franchise. That was it right there. You know, that was the one game that would come out and you're like, it's going to be good. It's Halo. So I am really hopeful that that is the case once again here, but the talents there, Coalition's good. So here's hoping Halo Infinite later on this year is as well. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the DS Lite and a feature that's been found nearly 15 years later. And that is the ability for the DS Lite to output to your TV. Check this out. This is over on Twitter. This uh, this from Nighthack saying, NDS TV out for the Nintendo DS Lite is now a reality. A hidden feature by Nintendo now brought to light. And you can see a video of them showcasing it here. Looks like I guess it's going through composite as they have it plugged in. And the little DS Lite is on the bottom there. And a couple of other follow-up videos, they show the ability to switch between screens. So I guess the kind of the bottom and the top screen can be chosen for what's displayed on screen there and they're like playing Pokemon and stuff. And this is really, really cool to see this because it's a feature that no one really knew existed until now. I guess there's just a way to pull it from the SOC itself off of the board, maybe a spot where you can take some sort of uh, signal and then I guess convert it and able to use on your TV. I'm trying to figure out what this would have been for. Maybe uh, just in general for development purposes, that's possible because it was never implemented or who knows, maybe Nintendo did have plans so that the DS Lite could be docked or shown on your screen, but then it's like, okay, which screen's being shown, all of this. Anyway, to go a bit further here, they are releasing more and more documents and tutorials and stuff as they go along and they continue to update it on GitHub. So I'll leave a link down below. Maybe when we get to the point where it is something that is a bit more feasible to actually do, We'll try it here on the channel and see if we can get video out from the DS Lite to your TV. And before we go to the comment of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I said, which 3D Zelda game is your favorite of these choices? Now I put up uh, the basics, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, and Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild was the runaway favorite here at 53%. Ocarina of Time was number two at 23%. Then Wind Waker at 13%. And then Twilight Princess at 11%. And this isn't surprising. Most Mostly because, as I mentioned, Breath of the Wild was a massive seller. And there are a lot of people who got into the Legend of Zelda franchise with Breath of the Wild as their first one. And I mean, think about it. The Switch brought in a whole new era of gamers to Nintendo. It all makes sense. And that's kind of one of the reasons. Again, I think that Skyward Sword is going to overperform on the Switch, whereas it underperformed back on the Wii. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from Arthur saying, it's crazy how Dinosaur Planet was inside a private collector's cave for 20 years for no one to play. And it really goes to show you that any of these games that are like, that are like these legends that we hear about and we're like, ah, oh, that'll never come out. They could. I mean, GoldenEye Remake ended up online and then weeks later we get Dinosaur Planet. I mean, who knows what's next? Maybe, maybe Earthbound 64 is next. That would, that would probably be the one that would break the internet if Earthbound 64 came out and, uh, and maybe people even modded it together a bit, hacked it up some so that it was at least in a playable state and we could pop it into our flash carts and try it on the Nintendo 64 with real hardware. That would be something. Or maybe a build of what Valve was working on at some point for Half-Life 3 because there's been talks that they've at least developed what they could do with Half-Life 3 and they've just left it internal. A lot of things could get out there and now, to me, anything's possible. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoy these video guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether it's that Switch Pro and some of the talks around 1440p and all of this, yeah, it didn't turn out to be correct, but what about the idea of the Switch Pro coming out later this year with 4K upscaling and would they have to put it next to a big time game like a Breath of the Wild 2 or a Metroid Prime 4, or maybe a Mario Kart 9. Let me know about that one. And then what do you think about all this talk around DualSense drift? But now we've seen that the joysticks themselves seem to be at fault. They're not very durable and they're being used in basically all of the controllers that we're buying. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.